Yeah. Welcome to tonight's lesson. So tonight we're going to begin looking at force vectors. And this is our second lecture. Yeah, so we looked at the introduction last week. And this is our second lecture. I'm going to begin looking at um, force vectors. Mm -hmm. yeah, so in case maybe you have any questions or you want to reach me for anything concerning academics, of course, you can use these lines on the screen. And anyone who wants to join the lessons, they can also contact me using any of these um, lines on the screen. All right, so let's quickly move on. So tonight, um, in this chapter, we're going to look at uh, uh, we're going to look at these objectives. Now, so the first thing that we we'll discuss, or the first thing that we we'll do, is to show how to add forces and resolve them into their components. So we're going to be using what is known as the parallelogram. Uh, I mean, parallelogram law. Yeah, so this is what we're going to be using. And the second thing that we're going to do is to express the force, the force, or the force and position in Cartesian vector form, and explain how to determine the vector, the, the vector's magnitude and direction. Yeah, and then lastly, we we'll look at uh, rather I'll introduce the dot product. Uh, in uh, yeah, I'm going to introduce the dot product in order to determine the angle between the vectors or the projection of one vector onto another. All right, so let's quickly begin. So, uh, as I said, we're going to look at uh, force vectors. So, for you to understand forces or how to resolve them into their components, you first need to understand what, what, what a vector is. And then apart from that, uh, you also need to understand what a scalar is. Yeah, so all physical quantities in engineering and mechanics are measured using either vectors or scalars. Then a scalar is just any positive or negative physical quantity that can be completely uh, specified by its magnitude. Yeah, so in other words, we know that scalars only have magnitude and no direction. Yeah, so examples of scalars that we're going to look at are length, uh, mass, and time. Then a vector is simply just any physical quantity that requires both magnitude and direction for its complete description. Yeah, so a vector is just any quantity that can be described using magnitude, I mean, that can be described using both magnitude and direction. And examples of um, these uh, vectors are simply just um, force, then we have position and moment. And so a vector is shown geographically, I mean, sorry, graphically is shown by using an arrow. Yeah, so it will have what is known as a tail and a head. Yeah, so the length of the arrow represents the magnitude of a vector. And then the angle between the vector and a fixed axis defines the direction of each line of action. So what they are trying to say here is that the, let me just send the color of the marker. Okay, so the length of, um, the, the length of the, the the line, yeah, or the length of the tail, simply what represents the magnitude of the vector. So you can say this vector is bigger than this this one here, and then the arrow show, um, yeah, sorry, not the arrow, but the angle between the the vector or the angle between this line and um, the fixed axis. So it can either be uh, like this, like that, depends with uh, how the question is asked. Yeah, so the, the worst is the angle between the fixed axis, for instance, here, if I say this is my x axis, right? So the angle between this x axis and this vector here is what defines or is what determines the 
direction of this vector. Okay. So this is what I was just trying to explain. Yeah, so the angle between let me change the pattern. Okay, so as you can see, the angle between this vector here and the fixed axis is what determines the uh, direction of this vector. And then the length of this line here, or the length of this tail, is what determines what? The magnitude. And then this arrow here, this, uh, this head part, is just there to show the sense of direction of the vector. Okay, so let's quickly move on. So let's look at vector operations. So multiplication and division of, of a vector. Multiplication and division of a vector by a scalar. So this is what I'm going to start with. Yeah, so if a vector is multiplied by a positive scalar, its magnitude is increased by that amount. And when multiplied by a negative scalar, it will also change the directions, the directional sense of the vector. So, so graphic examples of these operations are shown below. So for instance, if so that what they are trying to say is that if you multiply this vector by two, you are going to increase its magnitude, meaning the magnitude will be multiplied by two. So you have a long arrow like this one. And then if you multiply it by a negative number, its sense of direction or its directional sense is also going to change. So you know, when you multiply this A by negative 0 0.5, you expect this to reduce or to be divided by two and its direction will also change because of the negative in front there. So you can see here, this has been divided by two. That's why we have a short arrow here. And then because of this negative, this has changed, this um, arrow has changed its uh, sense of direction. This is what we have as a result. Okay. So now what happens if you are adding vectors? So in most cases, when you're adding vectors, um, we use what is known as the parallelogram law. And then there's also a special case um, where, let's say, for instance, if, if two vectors are collinear, meaning meaning they are in the same line of they are line they are lying on the same line of action. Uh, in that case, you don't have to uh, use the parallelogram rule, but you just have to add them direct. Yeah, and of course, the direction will be determined uh, by the by either the way you okay by the direction will be determined by the result of the solution. So let me just try to draw something here, what I'm saying. So if, for instance, you have the vector A facing in this direction, and you also have the vector B facing in this other direction. So if you're adding these two uh, vectors, you have to um, draw parallel lines to these vectors. Uh, so even decide to draw a parallel line to this vector A. And then at this point where they are meeting, I'll call this point as point P. You draw a line starting from the, from the point where they are meeting, where the two tails are meeting, you draw it up to that point there. So this is what we're going to call R. So this, this distance from there to there, or the magnitude of this vector from this point to that point is, also B. So meaning if you add vector A and vector B, the result and that you're going to get is R. Yeah, so this is what they're trying to explain here. And then in case maybe you have two collinear vectors, meaning you have this vector A and you also have, let's say vector B here. If you're adding these two vectors, since they are lying on the same uh, line of action, you have to just add them A plus B to get your resultant as this vector. And you're just going to add this vector and that vector to get this other vector down. Okay. So I've actually explained everything that is here. So this is what uh, they are also trying to illustrate in the figure. 
Okay, so I've explained this law here. Then a special case, which is when two vectors are collinear. Yeah. Yeah, so how do you subtract vectors? So the same way that we added vectors, that's the same way you subtract vectors. But of course, when you subtract, if let's say you have vector A minus B, then you're trying to find the resultant of this vector. If you have, uh, let's say, uh, let's specify the, we specify the direction or the positive and the negative direction of uh, the planes. This is our center, and then we say this side is positive, this side is negative. Huh? If you have the vector A, you have vector A facing, uh, okay, you have vector A facing, uh, oh, sorry, B facing this direction, and then A facing uh, towards the positive. Then they ask you to add vector A and B. How do you add? We know to say, uh, sorry, let me bring it this way. Okay, if you have this is this has your a, then this is b, if, and then they ask you to add a and b. So a will still remain in this same direction, but b, when you look at b in this case, b is facing towards the positive, but in this case, we it has what a negative in front of it. What does that mean? It means that the direction is going to change. So meaning you have your b facing this, uh, uh, rather your I don't know why I'm writing this. This is supposed to be F. Then your negative B is therefore going to face this other direction. And when you add these two using the parallelogram law, you expect your resultant to come out like this. So you have something like this. So the resultant to be there. So this is going to be our R. Then you find the um, the value of your solution. So this is what I'm trying to explain. Yeah, of course, you've seen what I just did. Okay. So let's look at this example here. So I explained this. Uh, so let me just try to, this is just like going back to uh, the same thing that I explained. So when you've been told to add the force vector uh, F1 and F2, the first thing that you need to do is to draw the parallel lines to these forces. So drawing parallel lines to the forces is a very simple thing that I believe anyone can do. Okay. So you're going to have something like this. I'm going to draw a parallel line to F2. Now, and then I'll also draw a parallel line to F1, like that. So when I draw these two, I'm going to draw my resultant force vector during the, the center of, or the vertex of these two uh, tails and also the point at which the, um, the, the, the parallel lines are meeting. Okay, so this is going to be my R. And then if I want to add these two forces, I just have to add this F1 and this is going to be my F2 because it's because uh, it's equal to this other side, this side. Yeah, so this is what I'm just trying to explain. Okay, yeah. and that is going to be your result time. So this is um, the resultant force is equal to F1 plus F2. So that is what you have. Then what if what if you have a situation like this one here? How do you um, find the components of a force? Uh, let's say, for instance, you've been given F here, and then they ask you to find um, the, the, the component of this force in this V axis and the U axis. So this is also a very simple question. So, yeah, so this is what they are actually trying to ask you to find. Uh, so it's, it's a very simple question. 
I think I have a question which is exactly like this, which we're going to solve together. All right, so application of a sign and the cosine rule. So when you're dealing with the parallelogram uh, rule, you have to know how to apply the sine rule and the cosine rule. So let me just remind you, or let me just write these formulas on the screen. So the sine rule, if you have A there, then you have B there. Uh, okay, according to this triangle here that you're saying on the screen, uh, sine, you can say A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C. So this is the sine rule. And then the cosine rule is simply just, I'm going to use C. If for instance, I'm trying to find the, 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 the magnitude of this side C. So this is going to be C squared being equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AC, oh sorry, 2AB and then cos C. So when you simplify this further, you can say C is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared minus 2ab and then cos c. So this is exactly what you are going to get as, you, as your result. And this is what will give you the solution for the magnitude of c. So applies to b if you want to find b, you can also apply the cosine rule. Yeah. Or you can apply the sine rule depending on what you've been given. Okay. So these are the formulas that I was just trying to write down. And then when do you apply the cosine rule? So you apply the cosine rule when you have been given two sides and one angle. You apply the cosine rule if you're finding the third side and in the triangle, you need to have at least two sides given and then one angle should also be given. And then when do you apply the sine rule? So you apply the sine rule when you have um, two sides, either when you, you, you have two sides given in one angle or two angles given in one side. That is um, the only time you can apply the sine rule. Okay, so let's quickly move on and see how we can apply all these formulas and uh, uh, concepts that we've discussed. All right, so we have a question here on the screen, which seems to be a very simple question. So the question says, uh, the screw I in the figure is subjected to two forces, F1 and F2. Determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. So this is a very simple question. So now how do we solve this question? So the first thing that you need to do is to draw the parallelogram. So you, um, you extract the parallelogram from this uh, given structure here. Or if you want, you can just extend these same arrows that have been given. But I wouldn't advise you that because when the mark is marking, they also look at the free body diagram. So the first thing that you do, you draw what is known as the free body diagram. So I'm going to write this, um, this force F2 here. And then I'll also write my F1 there. So F1 is somewhere like this. So I'm going to draw two parallel lines, a line that is parallel to F1 and the line that is parallel to, sorry, this is F2, F1 and the line that is parallel to F2. So I'm going to draw them there. So this is what I'm going to have. This one is parallel to F2. This one is F1, sorry. Okay. Then this one is parallel to F2. Okay. So after drawing this, we can now draw what? So after drawing this, we can now yeah, you can now draw 
And so after drawing this uh, parallelogram, you can now draw the resultant. So the resultant will be like that. So now after drawing the resultant, you can now put in what we've been given. So what have we, what have we been given? Okay, let me just draw it properly here so that you see what I'm going to be doing. So I'm saying this is uh, my F2. Then I have F1. Then I'm going to draw two parallel lines like that. Okay. Hope you are able to see what I'm writing. Then we draw the resultant force there. So this is the resultant. And what have we been asked to find? Determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant. So this is what we are trying to find here, FR. So um, I'm just writing for value. Okay. So we have FR there. Okay. So when you look at this, uh, let me also draw something here. If I draw something like this. So when you look at um, this uh, uh, triangle that we've been given, we can figure out the things that have been given and the things that are missing. So the first thing that we've been given here is F1 and F2. So F1 has been given to be 100 this side, then F2, so this is F1, then F2 has been given to be what? 150 Newtons. Then we've also been given one angle, which is this angle here. How do I know that I've been given this angle? Let's look at this part here. So when I draw a line that is parallel to this line here, it means that when we use the, the rules of angles, we know to say this is making something like a Z angle. So we have 10 degrees there. So we also expect this part to be also 10 degrees. Then apart from that, we have um, this angle that has been given here, 15. So 15 is also equal to, so this angle here is also equal to the angle that will be formed after drawing a line that is parallel to this uh, X axis here. So when you draw a line that is parallel to that, we expect this angle 15 degrees to also be equal to that 15 degrees. And what we are going to remain with here is a 90 degrees. So now when you add 10 plus 90 plus 15, 10 plus 90 plus 15, we are getting 115 degrees. And this is the angle that we have there. So 115 degrees is the angle that we have there. So this is also F what? F2, which is, oh, sorry, this is also F1, because it's parallel to this other side, so which is also 100 newtons. So now let us extract the triangle that is important here, or the triangle that, uh, will help us to find the resultant. So we have 150 there, and we have 100, then our resultant is there. So we have FR there, then we have 150 this side, we have the angle there which is 115. And then apart from that, we also have 100 this side. So now, according to those rules that we learned, or the ones that I'm just from showing you, cosine and the sine rule, which rule can we apply here? Let's look at what we've been given. So we have been um, we have been given 150 this side. So we have been given two sides and one angle. So if you've been given two sides and one angle and you've been asked to find the other side, it means that you can use um you, you can use what is known as the cosine rule. Yeah, so you can use the cosine rule because we've been given two sides. Let's say this is A, this is B, and then we've also been given the angle, small letter C there. So we can see, we can say, so this is big letter C. If at all we're trying, we're trying to write the cosine rule in terms of A, and A, B, C, and C. A, B, and C. Okay, so we say c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. Then we have cos c. So 
we have been given A, we have been given B, we have been given the angle C. Then we're trying to find the resultant force vector, which is simply just C. So I'm going to write it as FR. So FR squared is going to be equal to, we have our A that has been given is 150. So we'll put 150 squared there plus, and then we have 100 there, 100 squared and minus two, we we'll put 150, and then we we'll put 100 there. Then we we'll say cos what? Cos 115 degrees, cos 115 degrees. Then when you put this on your calculator, you find your F squared, uh, F R squared to be equal to. So this would give you something like, uh, so we have 150 squared, 150 squared plus, uh, 100 squared. Um, so this gives us what? 32500. Zero, zero. And say minus 2, 150 times 100. That gives you uh, 15,000. So 15,000 times 2, it gives you 30,000. So we have 30,000 there. And then we have cos 115. So cos 115, yeah, so cos 115 uh, gives us a negative number. So we expect to have a positive there. Then times three times 30,000. So I'm just putting cos 115 this side. Yeah. Times 30,000. So 30,000 times um, cos 115, then we say plus uh, 32500. Yeah, so, and then we find the square root of that, square root of the answer. So, um, when you find the square root of the answer, you got you're going to get your FR as so. The square root of the answer gives us 212.6. So this gives us 212.6 newtons. So this is the FR, or which is the resultant force. So this is what I was just trying to find there. And then we have just ma managed to find the magnitude of the resultant force. So now, how do you find the magnitude or rather the direction of this same resultant force vector? It's also simple and straightforward. How do you find that? So we have, find, we have found this, um, the, the FR, okay, sorry, let me just draw it properly. So we've managed to find, okay, we've managed to find FR, so the direction of this vector, this uh, resultant vector is simply just the angle between uh, this stationary axis and uh, the same FR resultant vector. So that is the direction. So we need to find the angle between these two paths, and that is what we are going to call the direction. So. The direction is also simple and straightforward. What you just need to do is to find this angle and then we add it to 15. How do you find that angle? Remember this angle is 115 degrees. And um, what else do we know? We have, uh, this is 200 and what? 212.6. And then we also have, uh, this side has been given. This side is simply just 150. 150 newtons. So we have 212 newtons, 212.6 newtons, 150 newtons, and we've also been given this angle. But uh, 
how can we use what we've been given to calculate uh, yeah to calculate the the oasis the the side so if this is 115 here if this is 115 yeah so if this is 115 this is a quadrilateral it has four sides so opposite angles in a quadrilateral um opposite angles in a quadrilateral in a okay let me put it this way in a parallelogram let me write it like this we have a parallelogram right opposite angles in a parallelogram this one and this one as long as all these sides are parallel this angle here is equal to that angle so we also expect this angle to be 115 degrees so we have this angle we have that side and this side and then we're trying to find this other angle so which uh rule can we use so we use the sine rule because we've been given two uh two i mean we've been given one angle two sides and then we're finding the second angle so we say uh fr which is 212.6 over what over sine 115 is equal to um, this angle that we are trying to find. So say sine theta, then on top there we're going to have 150. So what you just need to do here is to make sine theta, I mean theta the subject of the formula. So sine theta will therefore be equal to 150 over 212.6. Uh, times sine 115 and the solution here will be so we say 150 divided by 212.6 times sine what sine 115 so we have zero point something let me find um, the inverse of that answer so we have uh, sine theta, I mean, we have our theta being equal to what? Yeah, so let me say, okay, let me just remove this. So when you find theta, when you calculate this, you find uh, theta by finding sine inverse of the answer that you find there, and this will give you 39.75. So now, when you find this angle, this angle that you have found is simply just what is there, 39.75. So to find the direction of, uh, of this uh, resultant force, you need to add this the 9.75 plus the 15 degrees there. Now when you add the two, the answer that you find is the direction of um, this resultant uh, force vector. So let me just display what I'm tr trying to talk about. So this is what I'm talking about. So when you uh, use the sine root to find the solution, you find the theta to be uh, 39.8. And after finding that 9.8, you add it to this 15 degrees here to find the, the, the magnet, uh, rather the direction of the resultant force vector. So these questions are simple and straightforward, provided you're not missing classes, you're attending each and every class. So in case you've missed a class, make sure that you always watch through the videos because at the end of every lecture slide, I'm going to be putting an exercise to test your understanding. So at the end of this slide, there are two questions that you are supposed to solve and submit before the next um, statics lesson. All right, so let's quickly move. So we have this other question, which is also very simple. It says, resolve the horizontal 600 pound force in the figure 2.12F in two components acting along the U and V axis and determine the magnitude of these components. Yeah, so this is also a very simple question. So now how do we calculate this? Remember what I told you, the first thing that you need to do when you're solving such questions is to draw the parallelogram. So let us draw the parallelogram. Um, and when drawing that parallelogram, we have to make sure that it also uh, combines these, it also has to combine all these um, 
um, all these components that we've been given. So we have U, we have V, then we also have this 600 pounds um, force. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line that is uh, parallel to U. And this is going to be like this. Okay. And then apart from that, I'll also draw a line that is parallel to V. And it's going to be like that. So I just have to make sure that uh, this also joins that. Uh -huh. So this is what I have. And then I have this as my 30 degrees. So if this is 30, and then when you look at this, this is also 30, meaning this whole part gives us what? 60. And then if we consider this as a straight line, we have to understand that a straight line, the angle of a straight line always adds up to 180. So when we remove this 60, we're going to remain with 120 here. Okay. So if this is 120 there, we also expect this to also be 120 following the Z angle rule. So this can also be 120, meaning this part is at 30 degrees. And yeah. All right, so first let's look at these same things that we found. Right? So how do we find uh, the component of this 600 Newton, uh, rather 600 pound force, the com the component of this 600 pound force along the U axis and the V axis. How do we find that? So this is just a triangle that I was trying to uh, draw. Okay. And then, the other, so, so let us now try to look at how we can find these components. So the force along the U axis. Yeah, the component of this 600 pounds uh, force along the u-axis is very simple because we have been given um, we have been given all the angles and then we also have one side which is the 600 here yeah? so we have one side we also have all the angles so what we use to find the other side we are going to use the sine rule because sine rule is a rule is a rule that con that consists of more than Okay, let me say, yeah, it's a rule that will help us to find the other side if we've been given two angles. Yeah, so the cosine rule only has one angle. So in this case, we've been given two angles, meaning we use, we've been given actually three angles, meaning we can use the sine rule. So we say F U, so the force, um, the component of this 600 pound force along the U axis over, uh, over what? We have 120 there. So this one is opposite to this 120. So we say over sign 120 is equal to, then we also have, what have we been given? This side here. So this side is 600. So we put 600 there and it's opposite to which angle? 30, sorry, we put 600 on top and then it's opposite to, 30, so we say sign 30 here. And then we just have to make this FU the subject. So FU is equal to uh, 600. Uh, but let me do it this way. Let me write it this way to make it easier to understand. So we say sign 120 over sign 30 times what? Times 600. So when you find that, that is going to be your FU. So I say sine 120 times, oh sorry, not times, but divided, divided by, okay, let me do this, divided by sine 30. So this gives 1.732. 1, 1 then we multiply it by 600. So it gives us, 1039.2 pounds. So this is the force, or this is the force component of these 600 pounds along the U axis. So we do the same to find the force component of this same um, 600 pounds along the V axis. So now, how do we do that? So we know we already have 
yeah, simply just using the sign rule again, because what you're just finding uh, is simply just this side, and this side is equal to this uh, side. So meaning using these same angles or using the value that you have found together with the angles that are there, you can easily find this other side. And this is very simple. So we do the same. We say sine 30, or we can start with this same side, which is F uh, V. So we say F V over sine 30 because it's opposite to sine 30. Yeah, so we say over sine 30 is equal to, then we have, uh, we can get either this same side here and um, the angle there. So we say uh, 600 over sine 30 again. So if you want, you can just say this sine theta and that sine theta cancels, meaning our F is equal to what? Uh, it's equal to 600. Or if you don't understand what I've done here, you can simply just do it step by step. So you can do it step by step. How do you do that? So we make F with the subject. Let me just do this. So we make the force along the, uh, I mean, the force component of the 600 newtons along the V axis as the subject. So we have that. Then this sine 30 multiplied and multiply by 600, we have sine 30 uh, times 600. Then everything over what? Over this sine 30 there. So sine 30. So we see that this and that cancels. And we're just remaining with. Um, so we're just going to remain with we're just going to remain with uh, 600 pounds yeah so this is the solution or this is the uh, the component of this uh, 600 pounds force along the uh, V axis alright so I don't know if you guys have any questions before I can show you your exercise so if you have any questions, you can ask because, uh, yeah, so I'm just trying, this is just trying to show you what, what I was doing. Yeah, so this is the exercise. So we have, I've only put two questions in this slide. Make sure that you solve, then when you solve, send the solution. You should scan your solution, then send it on, WhatsApp to my WhatsApp line. And then um, I'll check it through, I'll mark. And if you have any challenges, I'll see how best I'm going to help you. So there's this question, there's also this other question. Make sure that you solve these two questions. They will help you to understand the first part or rather the introduction, the statics. All right, thank you very much. See you in the next lesson that we'll have on Friday. Yeah, of course, tomorrow we're having mathematics. Yeah. So see you in the next lesson. Right. All right. So is, is, there, is there a due date for the exercise? You have to submit it before the next lesson because in the next lesson we'll be doing something else and it will just like, it will just be a build up from where it ended. So you have to make sure that at least you understand what um, I've explained in this lesson. And you know whether you've understood or not by answering the exercise. And the earlier you submit the exercise, the better. So that at least I can help you where you have problems before we do the next part. All right, thank you so much, sir. All right, you're most welcome.